picks. You're picking some interesting picks, but you've got to solidify your your top spot before you really do that. And we talked opinion. about Starhorn Royal Club a lot at the start of the previous season. We said, okay, they're yeah. doing very well because they don't have Name. But what we learned, especially towards the business end of the season, is that any points that you didn't manage to get the early, earlier in the season, that much harder to pick them up at, at, at the end of the season yeah. when teams are really trying for different things, whether it's seeding, whether it's to try and get into playoffs, avoid relegations. When the pressure's on, points are that much harder to pick up. So even though you might feel tempted to hide strategies or or try different things, you'll really pay for it at the end of the season. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are, of course, well and truly into champion select here. Maokai and Cassiopeia have been removed on the side of RNG, and Alistair Callista on the side of LGD. And we'll see what RNG decide to remove. And there are a few names that are sort of glaring out to me at the moment, Papa Smithy, and that is the fact that the jungle has not been touched. There's been a couple of games like this where the jungle ball has become through intact. Maybe just the theory that no one champion is the is the strongest and there's maybe four or five junglers that are really up there at the top tier of play. The thing that jumps out to me is that Cassiopeia has banned now LeBlanc. Where's the Azir? You have to force the Azir ban. I think you have to ban Azir. You know that Jahu will pick it up. Strongest on those Shurima champions. Azir really fits the meta. I think that needs to be the ban here unless Godvi Someone with a very wide champion ball, I believe, played his, up to close to his 20th competitive champion yeah. in recent history. So unless he has a pocket pick against that Azir, or he's happy to opt into the Kassadin versus Azir matchup, I guess is something we need to consider. Azir is probably going to be the ban, but if not, Kassadin's the only true answer available in picks and bats. Well, I mean, you say that, but Jauhu is probably one of our best uh, Zerath players in the LPL at the moment, and we've seen Zerath being played into Azir with relative success as well. And if you're thinking about getting Z uh, Zerath into the hands of anyone, it's Jauhu. I would say he's stronger on the Azir side, the matchup, and Azir was more likely to be the first pick. So God V on yeah, the Zerath doesn't really make too much sense to me in terms of his play style, especially. Might have just tried to go on to Orianna and try and force something in that particular situation. Ori is available. A lot of strong picks available. In fact, the whole jungle pool available. So maybe you don't even go for a jungle pick. You know you'll get something strong unless you really put a lot of priority onto the likes of Rek'Sai or Gragas. Well, it is looking at Nah here. Let me, of course, play a whole lot of that champion. Wants to find some comfort here on the Rift. But Akon, he can just go three games of Hecarim in a row if he likes. And you can see he's got a big smile on his face. He might be thinking about it. His options are basically to pick Hecarim into what is not a great matchup for the Hecarim, especially if a bit of snowball comes down. We see Good the likes point. of the Frozen Mallet or the Black Cleaver come through onto the Nah. Or maybe he'll just return to his trusty Rumble. We've already seen some very strong Rumble play today. Rumble would be a fine pickup against Nah. Of course, not the best laning matchup, but you're picking for comp rather than picking for lane. You've, you're already mousing over the Sivir, so if you take the Sivir and pick up the Rumble, not always that many great options to deal with it in team fights. But no need to commit to a top laner just yet. The Sivir priority will continue. It's one of Imp's strongest champions. And Sivir Ori, for LGD in particular, are power picks. This, these are amazing picks here for LGD. If they want to give them an opportunity to get into this, this uh, LP, PL split, this is the way to do it. And of course, the fact that Godvi's Oriana got through for the, to the second round of picks is absolutely amazing. MLXG can, of course, pick up whatever he wants there in the jungle. We have spoken about that already. And Lay considering his jungle option as well. And we'll see whether it is going to be the likes of Thresh being taken here because Lay does love that champion. It is going to be locked away in MLXG. This is the champion that MLXG has performed on recently. When we're talking about MLXG in good games, it's on the Rek'Sai. They're definitely picking pick power with the likes of Thresh and Rek'Sai for the early game ganking. Now you have CC in the bot lane, you have a strong ganking jungler. Nara's no slouch can very quickly cause a lot of pressure to come out. So they're picking power. They don't want to let Orianna get through a very quiet laning phase yep. into the late game. It just causes as much pressure as possible before a couple of items come through for that mid laner. Yeah, and TBQ thinking of going back to the Sejuani here. He has seen a lot of his success on that champion. It is going to be locked away. Imp going to be taking that Morgana, of course, probably passing that one over to Fan there in the bottom lane, or Akon could possibly play it up top. Of course, we've seen Morgana enter many, many lanes in the LPL. Woosh wastes no time, though. That is one of the quickest... Jinx lock-ins I have ever seen. We just haven't seen a lot of Jinx. Only Name is brought out so far in the LPL from my recollection yeah. and was on the losing side. They need to choose a mid laner. We talked a little bit about Lulu, uh, Zhaohu's Lulu in the pregame. Has shown some carry performance on this, but it's a very passive pick against Orianna. Even with that jungle Rex, say, okay, you have the opportunity for the flash unburrow into wild growth double knockup. But in terms of damage, you're pretty much centered around 
Uh, Jinx putting out the big damage in a fight unless Let Me can get far enough ahead to actually build the Black Cleaver from top lane. Yeah, that does look a little bit damageless. Of course, there are sort of champions that are known for doing decent damage in the early stages of the game. Of course, Rek'Sai, she's fantastic as far as that skirmishing is concerned. Let Me is a bully on the Nah, but you're exactly right. Come the late game, sort of the only reliable damage is going to be Woosh, and that is a lot of pressure on this player. I mean, you say there's a lot of pressure on him to perform in general. Look at this enemy team. Last oh, pick yeah. is, is the cannon from Akon. Too late for any sort of Janna or anything like that. They have multiple ways to get onto the back line between the cannon and, of course, one of the ball carriers, the Sejuani, yeah. is going to have the ultimate and be a great ball carrier for the Orianna ultimate. I don't know how you navigate through this many backline diving threats, and it's a very, very hard comp for RNG to put off. LGD, I think they've really won this pick and ban, but as we come down the lanes, very similar champions in the top lane. Lots of poke between Cannon and Nar. Yeah, and I always like it when Acorn picks Cannon as well. Sort of a bit of a shout out to his buddy Flame there that he keeps swapping positions with. Of course, Flame known for playing Cannon, but hasn't played much of it in the LPL so far. MLXG on his sort of renowned Rek side there. And Jauhu versus Godby, a lot is going to hinge on this matchup. Lots of rotational play required. This is a sort of comp that we said SK Telecom put to good use, but they usually pick a champion like Lucian yeah. and play around some mid-game power spots. And no escape AD carry with this Lulu and like execution heavy, like objective focused team fight comp is super, super hard to put off. Whoosh, look, he's the starting AD carry. They took him over Tail, who was the much praised AD carry on the Gamti lineup previously. Yeah. A lot of pressure on him to perform. He's no stranger to that. We've seen his vein play. He's going to need to make it all work on Jinx. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult. But, ladies and gentlemen, let's get on to the rift. And here we are on to the rift, ladies and gentlemen, with MLXG wandering up the lane. RNG taking on LGD for our third series of the evening. And we'll see whether RNG can make it off to a decent start this game because, as you were saying, Papa Smithy, a difficult comp to pull off. And LGD looked like, okay, we just want to press our R buttons at the right times and we're going to be okay. And it's the one of those things where even if one of them doesn't work, if there's a flank ultimate coming through from Akon, if it's Sejuani getting the Glacial Prison in, there's multiple different engage options available. So execution heavy in a game like this is such a risk to take. You can look at team fights, you can imagine what a team fight looks like for RNG, but so can LGD. And it's definitely the LGD of week three or four of the LPL, if you remember. Yeah. They love to run these multiple CC heavy comps. Yeah, and I have a feeling we've seen almost exactly the same comp. Maybe sub out an Orianna for a Lissandra instead. And it's basically what we were getting from LGD in the middle of the split. And look, it was ex it was effective in some ways. Sometimes they would pick it into John and just hate their lives. But yep. they last picked the cannon this time. It surprised our, uh, RNG to some degree. They don't really have any sort of peel against a cannon in terms of a Monsoon or the Gragas ultimate to really uh, opt into. Maybe just kind of hating the fact that they went for that uh, Rek'Sai over Gragas because they just don't have that option and Woosh is looking pretty precarious on this Jinx. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for Woosh to really make this one work. An early QSS might be coming out from this AD carry here on the bottom side of the map. MLXG starting off on the Grump, not going to donate any experience over to the bottom lane, but I want to talk about this top lane because Kennen and especially Minina, sort of the quintessential lane bullies but now they're going against each other. Does this sort of neutralize the lane? But absolutely. These are both no-resource, no auto-attack-focused champions in the laning phase. They're very similar. I mean, we remember the, the couple of schools of thoughts when Nar was really at the top of the meta. People were talking about Annie as a counterpick for Burst. These champions basically do the same thing. Maybe Teemo would be a bit more akin to what, <laughs> yep. what, what Nar's up to, but they're very, very similar, so it should be able to match pressure. In terms of early item pickups, they've gone for Doran Blade over the Longsword. So definitely the more offensive or the person looking to be more offensive is Akon with that more lane-centric purchase. Yeah, actually nice death sentence to land here on the bottom side as Lay didn't want to get into turret range. Imp throws out a boomerang. Nice, just the tip landing under Woosh there, putting him down to about half health. And this bottom lane, I mean, it's not necessarily what you expect to happen in this lane because Sivir probably should be receiving a little bit more pressure, but it is it is it sort of after the first AD items come in that this lane really starts to turn around? Yeah, Patriot Time and I were talking about this. We've seen a lot of Jinx versus Sivir, and Jinx has kind of simply looked as a lane counter to Sivir. In a lot of ways, I agree, specifically after BF Sword, the trades get better and better for Jinx. 
The options that Sivir does have, though, is that her all-in is better than Jinx's. She does have the option to use the ultimate, try and just use the fact there's no oh, escape. Oh, MLXG's found TBQ, forced to use that flash. The flash from MLXG, though, he's oh. got the red buff, doesn't even worry about it, knows that he can secure the kill, and first blood for MLXG. This is what this guy does on this champion. And this is not something you frequently see, but it's a very smart move from MLXG. You know that Sejuani is going to be so low in the jungle, well, Woosh is going to fall down in the bottom lane here at the same time. Imp managing to pick up that kill. And very interesting things happening all across the board. And Fan, last turret shot is going to come through. Lays <laughs> flash after him for the auto attack. Secures it. And 80 carry 1v1s and support 1v1s in the bottom lane. Yeah, Lay managed to make Woosh look good. Woosh actually gets an assist out of all of that. We missed, of course... The play coming into it before. I'm actually looking for a lane gank. Finding TBQ. Yeah, he was actually burrowed there. So TBQ probably surprising him just a little bit. The Tremor Sense senses for MLXG not working out quite so well. But he's going to make it out of there just fine. But, I mean, the big thing to consider here, Atlas, is that Lulu was able to push in Orianna. Orianna needs to wait to level 7 to 9 to actually have any sort of instant wave clear. Emma actually smartly understood that, realized there was so much space for him to aggressively invade the enemy jungle, found the low health piggy and dispatched with him quickly. Yeah, and we've spoken about this, the fact that Sejuani goes down incredibly low in her jungle, and this is one of the first times that we've seen that really capitalized on. And it wasn't able to be both top and mid pushed in, so there still was an element of a risk. I still believe that Cannon had a better lane position than Let Me in that particular situation. But the overall result, Zhao who pushes God V under turret, MLXG, so much free time and space, and it would have actually been with the whimsy, Zhao would have been first to react. So they try and play around their champion smartly in this situation, and suddenly, big advantage to MLXG in the jungle battle. Yeah, and you've already mentioned this is a team comp that's sort of very cerebral in its play style, and already they're showing intelligent moves. They need to do this. They need to get a big advantage because there's just so many different ways to deal with Woosh in the late game. And you kind of jokingly talked about the early QSS. The big reason that Woosh can't do that is there's not enough damage on the other yeah. members to go for anything other than the most efficient AD purchases possible. Yeah, well, so far starting not so strongly in that regard, picking up the extra... Doran's blade just to make sure he's got some lane pressure. He's going to put him behind a little bit as far as that first BF sword item is concerned. But if you can afford him any pressure in this lane, he's definitely going to be doing it because the Jinx that falls behind, especially when there's so much pressure, going to be difficult. Nice use of those rockets to make sure that Imp doesn't want to put on too much pressure here in this bottom side. And Godby taking a lot of harass here from Xiaohu, who's just relentless with those Glitter Lancers. Yeah, we said that, we talked about the fact that it's a defensive lane choice. You can still be very aggressive. The big difference between Lu and another champs don't really have kill pressure. Not taking Ignite, you're actually taking the Summoner Spell Cleanse, as defensive a Summoner Spell as you can. No offensive utility in the cleanse. It takes a lot of autos, but just gonna be a situation where Lei's trying to buy a bit of lane presence for Woosh. Yeah, Lei really playing this one as best he possibly can to try and give Woosh some time to farm this one out. But you can see it is working very effectively. He's died that one time, but he's still ahead in the farm. The trades have really worked out for Woosh. Imps tried some all-in trades, obviously successfully since he's picked up the kill onto Woosh already. All-in trades are fine. It's just those poke trades that are so poor for Imp. Even if he hits the Q and a couple of autos, you know that once you switch out of the machine gun form into rocket form, with all that extra range, which is always going to get multiple extra auto attacks and really stick the trades against it. Yeah, TBQ actually going to discover MLXG on the dragon here. Did manage to get it down to about half health, a little bit under there as TBQ does clear out the vision. So no sneaky dragons to be had this time from RNG. It was worth a shot. CS values very similar across lanes. Only big advantage between Jinx and the Sivir. 10 CS is probably what we expect in this matchup, given how well it started off. And mostly that's been, again, Lay's pressure. He was really smart to pick up that kill. Oh, yeah. Under turret. The Ignite coming through and also was just on time to get the assist onto Woosh. And that critically got a couple of extra potions in the inventory and helps with these trades that come through from Sivir. Yeah, and it's interesting. Actually deciding to forego the Sightstone and picks up the Mobility Boots instead, probably wanting to move around this lane. And when you're talking about the likes of Ganty, you're thinking, Sync Dream course, no longer on this side. Still in the LPL, ladies and gentlemen, just not quite on his, uh, with his friends. There, of course, Tail and Sync Dream were one of my most favorite bottom lanes. But uh, 
Syn Sync Dream esque, wanting to roam around the map and create some pressure. Of course, as much pressure as possible is not the worst idea. MLXG already went and took out the Sejuani, now trying to counter jungle as well. Three members there. Oh, oh God V picks it up though. I don't know how that happened. Was that a command attack? that stole a red buff. I believe it was just the command attack. The distance was already used. That's actually a really big win coming through for Godv. It won't really be that relevant in the 1v1 matchup. It doesn't have the attack range to actually auto attack Lulu multiple times, but you deny resources away from MLXG. Yeah, that's a massive amount of experience as well to go over to this Orianna and denying that from MLXG, like you mentioned, that is the big deal here. So of course, still keeping that money and experience on their side of the map. And quite simply, the auto attacks, when he's trying to proc the minions for wave clear, does that extra little bit of damage. That's probably enough to actually get the instant clear with the QW. So if that gives him more lane control against a Lulu matchup that he's been struggling in, I mean, red buff not usually a big... Uh, thing to consider in this matchup, but it could actually help Govvy in more ways than one. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Of course, Clockwork wind up a fantastic auto attack steroid there as well, and Jiaohu has been putting a lot of pressure onto Godby here. But you can see he's probably pretty keen just to sit back and farm. So far, so good. And in the bottom lane, CS lead actually dwindled here. I don't know if Imp has just been in lane longer. BS Sword has been purchased by Woosh. But 70 to 75 is very competitive CS between these two when there was a 10 CS advantage not long ago. Yeah, still 7 CS to clean up here, so he's going to be ahead just a little bit, is Woosh, but you're exactly right. The fact that Imp was falling behind quite considerably is a big deal, and double longsword here for Imp. So going for that Ghostblade Sivir build that we've been seeing rising in popularity. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be there, but it might just have been a case of getting power, but I think you're probably apt in that particular situation. I was expecting more Brutalizer pickups on the likes of uh, Graves when he's sinned, just yep. because... When you finish the Infinity Edge, you don't get the same burst and power as before now that it's lost the extra 5% critical strike when you finish the ability. Going for, say, a Pickaxe or a BF Sword into Brutalizer gives you a lot of physical damage when you have spells like the, the, the Graves Cure or the Boomerang Blade as Imp is able to put out. So going to look for a bit of poke. And you itemize in that Avarice Blade that no Sivir player goes without. Yeah, well, this is the thing, of course. Loving to grab an Avarice Blade if you can. Wish. Able to clear out these minions very effectively now, and you can see these trades working out quite well for the Jinx now that the BF Sword is in the back pocket. And it seems like the extra Doran's Blade purchase worked quite well here for Woosh, making sure that he could keep up the lane pressure. The bridging purchase, as you put it, seems to have done just fine. The purchase in the top lane, Akon is doing something we haven't seen on Rumble players in quite a while. He's actually going to rush the Rylize. You didn't think he had enough CC before. He's going to have plenty of it now. Yeah, this cannon sort of with the perma slow build. I wanted to grab that Rylaise. And of course, the build path is fantastic for Kennen at the same time. I mean, you want to find that extra tankiness just so that the first sort of dragon fight that you can use your ultimate in. I mean, you're not often able to complete the Zonya's Hourglass, so you may as well be able to survive to stun people in that Slicing Maelstrom. And one of the big factors is that before you get enough bolts on your ultimate to stun up a team, there are situations you'll stun a couple of members, but you just won't be able to actually get the five-man CC that's possible at level 16. But you will get guaranteed slow coming through from Rylai. So it's just basically guaranteed team fight CC before you hit level 16 and have the prerequisite amount of bolts. And if you're using Kennen in a peel situation, Kennen Vayne, for example, was a really popular duo in Season 2, it's even more CC for an enemy uh, gap-closing champion, melee champion. Oh, and Jinx steals it away with a zap. MLXG is going to get caught there by the Dark Binding, but can take a bevy of different options in order to get out. And I thought it was MLXG going to steal that one away, but nope, whoosh, locking it down with a zap. It's even worse than that, because Akon actually committed to using the teleport. Let me stay it in lane. He's going to push this wave and probably get a lot of turret damage. And it looks like he's going to even take this turret. And Kennen doesn't even have a dragon to show for that. Yeah, nothing gained from that teleport whatsoever. But it is going to be the ult used by Imp here on the bottom side. Lei just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And Woosh tried to offer some damage there, but not sure what Lei was trying to do. He was trying to look for a bit of brush control. Remember, they've had lane control for the majority of this laning phase. This time standing in awards, smart pathing from TBQ, called down by his... AD carry and support lane, they pick up a free kill. Yeah, and Cinder Hulk already completed now by TBQ. That kill is going to really help what was a generally falling behind uh, 
Sejuani, but you're exactly right. Just mentioning to me right there the fact that the Warrior enchantment was completed by MLXG and a sidestep. Surprised to see. I mean, not a lot of synergy between those two items. No. Of course, going to have a bit of presence to go and kill the Piggy, but this is obviously a very early game-centric build. It probably makes sense given that they have this earlier power spike as we've talked about. The most power early is to pick up the Warrior and get in the face of the Sejuani. She doesn't get any tankiness apart from the items she buys. Maybe this is just extending what we've said. First 25 minutes, Warrior's probably going to be the strongest in Chan option. Just try and use that window. But this basically closes the door on Rek'Sai being super relevant in the late game. Well, I mean, MLXG might have been considering the fact that, yeah, their team doesn't have a whole lot of extra damage. So pick up the Black Cleaver, pick up the Warrior enchantment, give yourself some damage. I mean, Rek'Sai does do a whole lot of work if you manage to get on top of someone. Cinder Hulk, sorry, I mean, Kindle Gem into a Ruby Crystal does kind of scream out Yeah, the, the Black Cleaver. That is the build path of that item. You're not pigeonholed into it. You could just build a Spectre's Cow, for example, and go into the Spirit Visage. But this yep. is still a very real possibility. And it's another champion that maybe will be a split push threat. If you look down at the items, now I've been, been building purely Magic Resist. We expect that Cannon will probably itemize in an Abyssal Scepter at some point. Suddenly having to deal with a Black Cleaver would be a big hole in itemization that might be able to be uh, abused later in the game. Yeah, potentially. I mean, MLXG might even turn it into a Lock of the Iron Solari if he wants to. Could be a possibility here, but a bit of a battle for the next red buff here. Of course, the third that's going to spawn. Goffy got the second, but it looks like TBQ is going to be able to smite his away. Preyseeker not going to find it there. And TBQ, second red buff of the game at 14 and a half minutes. He does pick up that item. We'll still keep scaling. He's the one with the Cinder Hulk. So into the late game, he will get 25% extra bonus statistics and even damage because, of course, the Northern Winds has that damage yeah. component that scales off health. Sejuani's at the we weak at this point. Cinder Hulk, choosing Cinder Hulk over the Warrior in chat means that this is a very, very strong Rek'Sai coming through in this particular jungle matchup. But if you don't make anything happen, you just get outscaled. And that's why Cinder Hulk's the safer choice. I mean, Condi even ups for the Cinder Hulk on Lee Sin, which I think is a bridge too far. But with Rek'Sai, you have both options, and he's elected for this Re Warrior and Chan. Yeah, 78 CS now to 57 as far as that jungle is concerned. Of course, MLXG opting to sit and farm for quite some time. We'll see whether that is going to bite him. You said that probably needs to do as much work as he possibly can in the early stages, but maybe just wants to hit some item timings before he can be really relevant. I'm waiting to see what he purchases. If it's the Phage, then it's probably going to be the more offensive choice. Doesn't really have gold for either item, so at the moment we're not going to know either way. Of course, it has that flexible option to look down. And given this game, I think you have to go for the Aegis Atlas. I think you have yeah. to go for the Locker, but then why do you buy the Warrior? Well, that's true. I mean, I, mean, I guess... Maybe thinking, I got First Blood, managed to kill TBQ in the jungle, I can snowball off this because he picked up the Warrior very early on, but perhaps it just didn't quite work. And look, I'm a fan of Warrior in certain scenarios. It's just, as a melee champion, which is what Rek'Sai is, she's going to dive into a fight between Kennen CC, Sejuani CC, Orianna CC, and I mean, Morgana's going to at some point channel the Soul Shackles. There's so much extra damage she's going to have to walk through that how many auto attacks are you realistically going to get off as Rek'Sai in a late game team fight. Yeah. Two, three, maybe at max. Why not go for the extra health? Someone like Clearlove's already shown that if you stack giant spells, get enough health, you will still do relevant base damages as Rek'Sai. You have so much uncleansable CC every few seconds when you can go between the bowed and unbowed stage. This is not a warrior game to me. No, it doesn't really look like it, but we'll see whether MLXG can make it work. Of course, we haven't really seen too much of the Warrior plus Black Cleaver Rek'Sai, and it might make him a bit of an assassin towards the later stages. In a split push situation, maybe, but not picking up a locket basically means that RNG can't fight for Dragon. Yeah, and you probably want to be able to do that, of course. LGDR looking to try and set some vision up. They're all collecting around their blue, which isn't quite up just yet. Let me and Acorn with teleports at the ready towards this top side, as Let me just going to bounce further away. Knows that not too many people visible on this map, and he wants to keep himself safe. Lots of gold has been put into getting exclusive vision around the dragon area, but now LGD, two members, the jungle support duo, looking to try and answer that vision. There's a pink ward cleared out. There's still aggressive green and defensive pink wards around the area. Both teams are at least warding to try and take out the second dragon. Yeah, MLXG just going to help Woosh out, taking down that Krog. 
understanding that this Jinx really needs to get going. Of course, two items, generally what you want to have in your back pocket before you're really starting to do a whole lot of work on that champion. At the moment, Berserker's Greaves and an Infinity Edge Double Dorans is going to be doing fine. You probably want a Static Shiv or that uh, Phantom Dancer if you really want to get some work done. Speaking of item purchases, Luz just gone back, bought CDR boots, and now they need a slide rod, so they're going to be very close to 40% CDR, if not already obtaining it, and enough to build up whoever's in the front line. I have a sneaky suspicion, now that the locket's complete, but with the Warrior Enchant especially, build up MLXG, go for the double knock-up between the yeah. Unburrow and the Wild Growth, and just empower him, at least at this stage, to be able to negate most of the damage, and do what should be considerable damage in the front line. Yeah, well, this is the thing. At this stage of the game, that Warrior Enchant's still very relevant. Not a whole lot of armor built up by anyone. In fact, it's just a Ninja Tabe. That's the only thing that's in there. RNG have started off this Dragon. The second for them is Woosh with some rockets over the back of the pit. No one in position from LGD, and this is going to go down for free. And after RNG steal away the first, they're even looking to try and get amongst this red, uh, blue buff. It went to someone towards the right-hand side. I believe that might have been Imp. They grabbed himself. No, it wasn't. Teleport comes through from Acorn. Usually the master of teleport, but there's also the ultimate used by Siva. Yeah, on the hunt it was pop, but that was a beautiful use of the Glitter Lance in order to slow the entire team of LGD down. So Free Dragon not able to steal away the blue buff. An uncharacteristically poor teleport coming through. Usually we're praising Acorn for his teleport usage, but teleported after the dragon objective had gone down, after blue had been contested for, and then just easy disengage with the Glitter Lance. Misses out on the getting considerable turret damage and then trying to equalize the turret score in the top lane. In fact, LGD don't have a single turret to their name. Yeah, unable to take anything here, of course. Mid lane outer turret was taken down just recently, but the bottom lane outer still up. Wish looking to try and put some pressure there. Let me being very aggressive. He knew he had a lot jungle. of cavalry coming through. MLXG and RNG in general are using their power windows smartly. Can they grow a big enough one to justify the fact that they've got an early game comp and even went so far as to invest in an early game jungle item? All in the early game, it looks good for a time, but if you ever lose that big fight, you just worry that from there you can never really get back into a game. Yeah, and the fact that Godby is on his Orianna here as well has turned multiple games on his own with his fantastic shockwave use. And look, you give Ariana two items at any point, and it's a horrible thing to have to deal with. Must have enough gold for the new Slide Rod. Yes, does purchase it and a pink ward. Let me just control in the wave in top. Happy to keep the freeze going. Three turrets down and no real damage done to their turrets here. RNG, objective-wise, flawless game from them. Three turrets to zero, two dragons to zero. Yeah, really looking good and spoken many times that this comp is going to get harder and harder to use, but are they far enough ahead? I mean, 4,000 gold, nothing to scoff at, especially with sort of, it's only about these objectives. It's the only place that this gold is coming from. Is it going to be enough for this RNG lineup to get through and take a victory here? I think they've hit their part-time. I think they've done what they need to do, but they've never, they haven't really gotten anything that convinces me that there isn't a time when LGD will outscale. They haven't broken the base. Not that that was a realistic goal from 21 minutes, but I mean, there's no lane that's ahead more than it should be. There's 20 CS advantage in Jinx and Silver. That's to be expected as this matchup goes more and more in yep. Jinx's advantage after the BF sword is completed. Competitive and slightly ahead in other lanes. They've taken the dragons and towers that they've absolutely picked to do. It's just a question of can they parlay that in the next 10 minutes towards getting those big win conditions. Things like the third and fourth dragon, things like a Baron, things like breaking the base. These are all super necessary because how many games have we seen where teams picked scaling comps and this got overtaken, the base broken? Teleport's in though. This is a lot of aggression. Yeah, let me all the way up here. Oh, Fan dodges out of the way of the Super Mega Death Rocket, but Jiao who picks it up with a nice Glitter Lance actually flashing over the wall there. RNG looking to make a massive move, and let me just teleporting in exactly the right spot. Acorn not having teleport does pick up a turret in top to answer, but if they can take an inner turret, it's definitely a great trade for RNG. These are the aggressive moves they need to be making. They need to be on the front foot, because as we've mentioned so, so many times, this game will tip at a point. It most certainly will. Giant's Belt now completed for MLXG as well, and you mentioned... He did pick up the Locket of the Iron Solari. I'm a little bit disappointed. Would have liked to have seen a Black Cleaver, but not happening just yet. We'll see whether MLXG does fit it into the build path somewhere. 
but I have to think it will be the likes of Arandu and Zoman coming through next. And that's going to be a very tanky Rek'Sai, regardless of the fact that the Warrior and Shaman is there. And maybe that Warrior going to help do a whole lot of extra damage here to Imp, mostly in these team fights. And the big question is, will this be an option moving into the next patch? Because Cinderhog is going to see continued nerfs, I think, as we go forward. He sees a nerf on 5.9, probably scheduled for a couple more tweaks as we move forward. I, I hope there is a scenario where you can choose between Cinder Hulk and Warrior on champions like Rek'Sai, who both have their advantages and disadvantages when you pick up those items. I feel like on 5.8, Cinder Hulk's still the correct choice. But yep. if you make Warrior work, if you force enough fights, if the enemy opts into engagements against you when you have this Warrior enchant and gets surprised by your damage, it can be a valid choice. The reason why I say that RNG haven't hit one of these tipping points that really builds them towards a late game victory is that LGD just haven't fought, and that's probably quite smart because at some point, not fighting and showing up with a Sejuani with two or three health items is a different, complete situation for RNG. Yeah, and TBQ, of course, does have boots too in the Ninja Tub. He does also have a Sight Stone in his back pocket as well, synergizes nicely with the Cinder Hulk. And I think as soon as Godvi picks up his Rabidon's Death Cap, or potentially the Luden's Echo if he wants to go that way, then LGD just say, okay, well, we've got um, the most devastating shockwave that we're going to have this game, and let's utilize it. Cannon's not interested whatsoever in going for a Zonia's Hourglass. Just stacking magic resist, not building for lane whatsoever. In fact, building for mostly disregarding this Lulu damage and building up Orianna and Sejuani's damage. If Cannon gets into the middle of a fight with the Abyssal yeah. Scepter Aura running, it's been the Luden's Echo second. We're talking intense burst damage from Orianna. And setting up Godvi to carry on Orianna, that's a winning strategy for LGD. Yeah, you're right. And this is the two-item spike here for Orianna. Maybe not quite as, as fantastic as far as the utility is concerned when you pick up the Luden's Echo instead of the Rabidon's Death Cap. Shield's not going to be quite as strong, but... Man, you can clear waves so quickly. You can see those little purple bolts going everywhere. MLXG looking to put position around this dragon. And RNG, they need to watch out for this next fight. Okay, so we're waiting to see if it's contested. Fans poked out really big. Yeah, beautiful three-man ultimate there from our, um, TBQ, though, but couldn't really start the fight. Imp pops the ult, but the Glitter Lance again for the disengage. LGD might need to get out of here because... They've used a lot of their ultimates. And the big factor, Akon channeling his teleport, cancelled by the Nar ultimate from Let Me, so not available to contest. Let Me didn't have a teleport of his own, so did his job, and suddenly the cannon ultimate that's built for team fights will not be present. Yeah, Dragon getting a little bit of aggre a little bit aggressive onto Woosh there as MLXG making his way in towards a flanking maneuver. LGD taking a lot of damage from this dragon, but it's going down very, very low. Xiao Hu trying to steal it, but TBQ steady hands on the smite, and LGD pick up their first dragon of the game. So Akon walks down, seeds the inner turret. They're going to try and push down the mid turret, completely out of position, RNG. So mid turret for outer turret's a possibility. No, they just back away. The ultra safe choice chosen by this team, actually prioritizing a first dragon over their top turret. I think that makes some sense. You might think, okay, but the gold trade and the oh, vision. Oh, Woosh, though, uses the heal to try and survive, but Godvi, his first shockwave, a pretty good one. Absolutely. That's rookie tier. We saw rookie do similar things, getting the kill on Mystic, that one IG the game against World Elite on Friday. MLXG trying to clear a bit of vision. One of the reasons why I say that it's important for... Uh, LGD to pick up a dragon is that it forces this game to go later. Of course, the fifth dragon is now going to be later in the game if RNG monopolize the next two. Later in the game is when LGD won a fight, and now the game's been forced to go at least six minutes later for a realistic win condition for RNG, because this team needs fifth dragon to really get rolling. Yeah, although I guess you've got a little bit more siege power with the long range of Jinx, but you're right, there's not going to be a whole lot that they can do, especially in a team fight without the aid of something more as Jahu's going to find Fan. Takes off half of his health bar, but Imp and Godby standing on top of a ward, getting baited just a little bit here by Jahu. That me continues his push. In all of this, the thing that's kind of lost, that's kind of surprising to me, is that Akon's literally built for team fights the whole way through. He has not built for lane whatsoever. Remember, he's laning against a physical damage champion in Nah, and has built Abyssal Scepter and... Uh, Rylai's Crystal Scepter, and of course, Hyper does a lot of percentage health damage, and Merc Treads. Like, he hasn't built any semblance of armor. He's yeah. built completely for fights and stayed very comfortable in the matchup, which just shows the general strength of Cannon as a laning champion. And the LGD is just looking to 
lose lane or fall behind in lanes, but be ready for that team fight phase. I talked about 35 minutes. I have a sneaking suspicion the next team fight, whether it's in two minutes or seven minutes, is going to go more and more LGD's way. Yeah, and Godby almost level 16, almost level three shockwave at the same time. Blasting one now picked up as well. And Ariana just scales more and more as this game goes on. And we put a Rabidin's death cap on top of this Luden's um, and as well as the Athena's Unholy, Unholy Grail. Grail that completely escaped me for some reason. Then this Ariana damage is going to be out of control. You're talking about levels. Level 16 achieved by Akon. Been picking up waves wherever he goes. Yeah, lots of stuns. So that's guaranteed stuns for the whole team into some CC afterwards. The slows from the Rileys will also be a very strong situation. I mean, it's, we're talking permanent CC. We're not even, we're completely discounting the fact that Sejuani is going to throw the Glacial yeah. Prison in into the Wombo of the Shockwave. You're going to have to be so, so careful. So you could say it's execution focused by LGD, but one of these members will get an AoE stun down, and if the other cooldowns are up at the same time, the burst damage is going to be huge. Well, if we're talking about RNG recognizing what they're up against here, we've got double QSS, and you would have expected that to come from anyone other than Lei, but Lei's got one. I think QSS is the way forward. Banshee Veil taken onto Nah. I guess Rek'Sai is going to accept her fate, just going yeah. for the locket and health. But it's going to need to be a purchase even onto Xiaohu, but he's got cleanse, so basically everyone is good to go in terms of CC. Yeah, everyone can get rid of one. So Akon goes in, pops all of the respective cleanses, and then... Uh, You've got TBQ throws out his ult. You've got Fan to come in with the Soul Shackles there as well. There's a lot of different options that need to be cleansed away, but having that first one able to be removed is a big deal, and Woosh sorely lacking in that department. And honestly, this game, looking at this team comp that they were up against, Woosh could have even taken the cleanse. He could have. It feels like ADKs aren't willing to give up the 2v2 power of heal. Yeah. And the fact that it also augments the your support allows your support to play a bit more aggressively knowing they're also going to get the heal as well so even in situations where you feel like cleanse would be the optimal choice AD carry is just too lane focused with their summons I think that's the worst choice because they need to get through lane to get True. relevant damage relevant items to do damage it's a very early QSS from Thresh is that the right call? it does take away quite a lot of gold from what could have been a much faster Mikhail's but he just feels like the utility that he's able to put out when he's alive is a relevant statistic in fights. Yeah, well, I like what Lee's doing, of course. Early mobility boots, picking up interesting support items. MLXG not quite making it under the tunnel there. But, of course, you know, a little bit Sync Dream-esque coming from the support role here of RNG. So, I mean, just returning to your point, you mentioned that everyone can drop one CC. You might think, okay, but they've got a million, so that's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. It is a big deal... It is a very good solution in the situation where everyone's standing in mid lane and it's like, let's go 5v5 fight, wee! Like that, that won't work, right? That's the big yeah. thing that can't happen because of these QSSs and cleanse choices. So how do you work around that if you're LGD? You need flank wards. That's what we need to see is Akon teleport flanking. He hasn't gone for home guard. He has actually gone for distortion and flash is very, very relevant on cannon. But they need a ward for him to get a flank engage, just so that it's one of those situations where you can't run away from the CC because you've got Kennen coming from the back or from the side and Sejuani coming from the front. If they're going for linear engage or rushing down a, a wave, it's possible that RNG have enough tools to deal with them. So they need to really intelligently use the teleport from Akon if they are going to get this team fight Wombo out. Yeah, well, it's true. They've also got to make sure that they're not engaged on here. Of course, MLXG was looking for something around there. Eight seconds now on this dragon before that one spawns. Nice little ward over the side, and RNG actually have to sweep that one. Thought they possibly could have managed to destroy that one in time, but the dragon going to spawn now. This will be the third for RNG, and LGD looking to try and even it out with their potential second. Down at half health yet again as RNG sort of taking their foot off the pressure, but they are going to be able to lock that one down. Nice Dark Binding has let me come through with the Mega Nar. And LGD, they are just going to back away. So RNG locking down the third dragon. That is... Definitely good, but of course, losing that one means that it's not the fourth. It's not that little bit earlier as far as being able to win the game with that fifth dragon win condition is concerned. You must ask, who's doing the shot coin for this LGD team? No PYL there. During this whole time, you were wondering whether LGD were going to fight. 
Oriana was in base. She was just walking by. She only got to the dragon as it was taken down. So either someone quite comfortably said, no worries, we'll give away this third dragon, or there was some poor shot calling and timings coming through. Because you should not be in base if you're looking to contest dragon. Yeah, that's precisely it. Although, Godby has now locked down the Void Star. Almost half health on that outer turret in the mid lane, but it looks like the inhibitor turret is going to be under siege here by RNG. Maybe a little bit of a rotational outplay by this side, because of course Jinx is going to be doing so much damage to this turret. Akon tries to teleport in, but it gets stopped because the tower's dead. This cannon's now going to go so far before he's going to get towards this one. The inhibitor going to fall, and RNG just a much better play. Takes the lantern out, MLXG is going to be safe, and LGD caught with their pants down. And again, the word shot calling has to be invoked. Scattered shot calling from LGD. Very late teleport from Akon. You're against a minigun form three item whoosh on Jinx. You're never going to be able to contest for that objective. RNG piling things on. They have a nice wave in bottom. They're trying to delay anyone from going to answer it. Do they have realistic Baron pressure? You look down their lineup, you have to say not really. No, and LGD, they're not making sort of the decision at all. I mean... The dragon, uh, the Baron, sorry, got started by a cute little prey seeker as TBQ is going to lock down the blue buff for Godby. MLXG wasn't even really concentrating on it, and Jahu not going to be too worried. Of course, Lulu not so mana gated as the likes of an Orianna is. Such a massive minion wave. We're talking about six minion waves crashing together in the bottom lane. Not able to send anyone there. LGD caught, though. Yeah, Godby in trouble. Super Mega Death Rocket sails past, but Akon sort of zoned away with his ult running. MLXG finds Imp, the warrior enchantment, doing some work there for this jungler. And LGD have to scatter. RNG somehow managing to turn it on. And as soon as Godby was down... There was no foot off that pressure. And there was just no cohesion. The use of these very long oh, that fans death calling. sentence was incredible. Woosh looking for it. That was the zap. And Jiaohu picks up the kill in the end. Woosh is, uh, Jinx is fantastic here. As another zap, not going to quite find it. But there's the death sentence. Lay locks it down. TBQ's dead. And so is another inhibitor. Akon wondering what's going on as far as his team's play is concerned because he's hanging around the base playing damage control. This is going to be a free Baron. And RNG, they've made this one work, but it's begging a lot of questions from LGD. Yeah, I don't want to focus on the negative, but the team fighting cohesion from LGD has been awful, completely off the page. Oriana gets aggressed onto it, and they kind of have Akon channel the ultimate. A defensive ultimate goes down from TBQ after everyone's dead. You need to layer these wombo combos down precisely, or they do nothing. And the result was very healthy members to the point where they can get multiple kills, push down mid, and go back and take the Baron. Yeah, and it's a 3-0-1 Rek'Sai here. 3 0 for Xiaohu on this Lulu. Very low kill game here for 35 minutes in, but RNG have just been playing this map so much better. I mean, to the point that Acorn is 0 0, zero. Yeah. He hasn't even seen an assist this game in 36 minutes. And he's on one of the best team fighting champions in the game. And he was the one that was getting to these objectives, and he did secure one dragon that... Uh, LGD has to show for themselves in terms of objectives, but 7-3 to three in turns, 3-1 to one in Dragons, next Dragon spawning soon, and of course a Baron too. RNG went for a rotational early game based comp, LGD went for a comp that should be really good in the late game. You asked the question, had they done enough? At the point you asked it, no, but now it feels like too many things have piled up for RNG. The gold lead's not quite there, but everything else, absolutely completely squarely there for RNG to overtake this late game scaling LGD. Yeah, and the minion waves now crashing into the Nexus here in the mid lane and the top lane. RNG just playing it out textbook, not actually thinking about letting any of it go to the RNG of this game. They're just going to be sieging up the bottom lane, getting things done that way. And these they have two inhibitors down. There's yeah. nothing that LGD can do to contest no. these sort of objectives. Maybe the inner turret if they get the godliest of all Orianna ultimates, but even then... And Godby, if anyone's going to be able to do it, it is this man. But is it too little, too late? These minions don't need a lot of help. No, they are doing a whole lot of work. There's a couple of siege minions actually built up here. Is RNG going to have to wait for the next one? Unless Let Me just wants to tank it up. He's got so much health now with that Warmog's armor as well as the Randuans. Baron buff duration still just over a third. 
Yeah, there's a brilliant ult though. Akon flashing on top of Woosh. Could be in trouble here. Pops the heal. Nice Zonya's there from Akon though as the Zap is going to go relatively wide. TBQ, now it's his turn. Woosh kiting back beautifully as LGD still very oh. healthy in the back line. But look at the damage from Woosh. Now that he's not kiting, he's freely auto-attacking. And man, the double kill after all said and done. Godby not with anyone from else left. And that is a very interesting teleport from Let Me, and Godvi's gonna have to escape. Xiaohu makes his way in there, picks up the kill as the Na pushes the Orianna back, and the Nexus turrets fall. RNG with a beautifully played game, but a lot of it's begging questions of LGD, but you can't take it away. This team has come together quite nicely for this one. Yeah, big ups to them for playing a very execution-heavy comp. I talked about how SKT could make this comp work with a slightly safer AD carry and Jinx. In this case, they went for a more aggressive choice in Jinx that gave them the late game damage they needed, and Jinx just survived during yeah. the burst damage from Akon. Finally, they managed to pile on all the CC optimally, but just too far in the hole. Multiple objectives working for RNG. Credit to them, some good shot calling. They got the most out of their team, and GG World played to this new and young RNG lineup. Yeah, RNG really pulling it together for this game. But ladies and gentlemen, there is a second one coming up. We'll see whether LGD can pick up their first victory here in the summer split of the LPL or whether RNG gonna make it a sweep for their first time.